So this is Mr. Martin. This is uh, uh, section 4.5 for math analysis, uh, graphing sine and cosine. This is video two. Uh, we're just going to uh, try and finish up the examples here. <coughs> so um, we've got uh, y equals 4 sine of x. So uh, just like uh, the first example, I'm just going to find a, b, c, and d first. So a is going to be 4, and then b is going to be 1, and c is 0, and d is 0. So when we get to the next example, um, we won't have c and d both be 0. So once we have a, b, c, and d, I can find the amplitude. So I know that amplitude is the absolute value of a, so since a is 4, the amplitude is 4. So I know it's going to go 4 up from our middle spots, which are usually um, intercepts, but not always, and then 4 down from those middle spots. So amplitude is 4. I need the period. Period is 2 pi over b, so 2 pi over 1, which is just 2 pi. I've got my phase shift, or um, horizontal translation, if you want. Um, that's c over b, so since c is 0, that's just going to be 0. And then my vertical shift, um, or uh, vertical translation, is just based on d. Um, vertical shift. So that's going to be 0 as well. And then we need my distance between key points. So that's my period divided by 4. So that's 2 pi divided by 4, or pi over 2. So uh, not much different than the first example, except that it's a sine curve. And our amplitude is 4 instead of a half. <coughs> so again, once I have um, all of this information, I can make a quick chart for sine x. And just like before, uh, I'm going to start at my value of the phase shift, because if there's a phase shift and I start at 0, it's going to make things a little bit messy. So um, starting at 0, uh, so then I've got 4 sine 0, which is 4 times 0, which is 0. And then my distance between key points tells me um, how far to go each time to get the next uh, key point, so either a maximum or a minimum or an intercept. Um, so I'm going to add pi over 2. So I've got 4 sine pi over 2. And I know the sine up at the top of the circle is 1, so that's going to be 4. And then add pi over 2 again for pi. So I've got 4 sine of pi. So that's 4 times 0, which is 0. The next pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So that's 4 sine 3 pi over 2, which is 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. And again, if you start to see the patterns, you don't necessarily have to complete the whole chart. Uh, and then last is uh, 2 pi, so I have 4 sine 2 pi which is 4 times 0, which is 0. So um, really what we've got here, since there's no phase shift and there's no vertical shift, I really have the same curve um, that we had way back up here for sine, except instead of just going up to 1 and down to negative 1, it's going to go all the way up to 4 and all the way down to uh, negative 4. So it's just going to be um, stretched. So I need to go up to 4. I need to go down to negative 4. Uh, I'm going to label every pi. So that's 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So I've got 0, 0. Pi over 2 is up at 4. Pi is back to 0. 3 pi over 2 is down to 4. And 2 pi is 0. So these are the uh, five points we get from our chart. So I'm going to sketch those in. And then we want one more period. So I'm going to continue up here, back to 0, down to negative 4, and then back to 0. And then, again, sketching a nice smooth curve. And there's your two periods for y equals 4 sine x. All right, moving on to example 3. If you notice now, we've got um, a value of c. Um, so that's going to um, give us a uh, horizontal translation or a uh, phase shift. 
Um, so let's go ahead and uh, graph this one. So uh, again, let's find A, B, C, and D. So I've got uh, A is equal to 2. B is still equal to 1. In this case, though, C is equal to positive pi over 2. Um, be careful here, because our standard form says um, Bx minus C. So the only way to get a plus here is if it's minus a negative C. Um, and we'll look at that in the next example. And then again, no value of D. So again, D is 0. <clears throat> Once we have A, B, C, and D, we can find the amplitude. So amplitude is absolute value of A, which is 2. So it's going to be stretched a little bit taller. Um, our period is 2 pi over b, so 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. So that's uh, the same as the other examples. And then uh, my phase shift is c over b, so I've got pi over 2 divided by 1, which is pi over 2. So you see it's minus pi over 2, but we're actually only going to be shifting the whole graph pi over 2 units to the right. Again, no vertical shift, because that's based on the value of d. And then our distance between key points is my period divided by 4, so 2 pi divided by 4, which again is pi over 2. So that's the same as the other problems. So um, let's make a chart of values. <coughs> I've got x. I've got uh, 2 sine x minus pi over 2. I'm going to do a bit of the work in my head here, so if you have questions about where these numbers are coming from, make sure you ask me next time you see me in class. Okay, so the graph is going to be shifted over to pi over 2. So if we start our chart at 0, it's not going to give us really where um, the period, a full period, is going to start. It's not going to give us that backwards sideways S shape. So what we want to do is we want to start our chart at pi over 2. And that's going to guarantee that the five points that we put in our table are going to give us um, one full period. So let's substitute these in. I have 2 sine pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So that gives us 0. So uh, sine of 0 is 0, so 2 times 0 is 0. All right. And then my distance between key points, again, is pi over 2. So phase shift pi over 2, distance between key points pi over 2. That's just coincidence. So my next value in my chart, I'm going to add my distance between key points. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So I have 2 sine pi minus pi over 2. So that's going to give me pi over 2. So I'm at the top of the circle. Uh, sine of pi over 2 is 1 times 2 is 2. And then add pi over 2 again. So now I'm at the bottom of the circle, 3 pi over 2. So I have 2 sine 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So that's going to give me 2 pi over 2, or pi. So sine at pi is 0, so 2 times 0 is 0. Uh, next we've got 2 pi. So I have 2 sine 2 pi minus pi over 2. So that's uh, um, 4 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So we're at the bottom of the unit circle. Sine at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And um, so that's 4 pi over 2, then 5 pi over 2. So I have 2 sine 5 pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So that's 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. Sine at 2 pi, the y coordinate at 2 pi is 0. So that gives us 0. OK, so um, our maximum value is 2. Our minimum value is negative 2. So we'll mark those on our graph. And then um, I'm going to go every pi over 2. So pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 
6 pi over 2, which is uh, 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, 8 pi over 2, which is 4 pi, 9 pi over 2, I think that'll be enough. If not, we can add more. Okay, so our first ordered pair here is pi over 2, 0. So pi over 2, 0. And then pi, we jump up to 2. At 3 pi over 2, we've got 0 again. And at 2 pi, we have negative 2. And at 5 pi over 2, we have 0 again. So I'm going to sketch in this one period, make a nice smooth curve. All right, and you see everything's just been shifted over pi over 2. So continuing with the pattern, we've got a 2, 0, negative 2, back to 0. Draw in our nice smooth curve. And there you have two periods of 2 sine x minus pi over 2. All right, I'm going to end this video here. We've got one more example. Um, I think I'm going to let you guys uh, try that on your own, see what you can come up with. It's a little bit different because it's got a vertical shift. Um, it's also got a phase shift uh, backwards. Um, <clears throat> so give that one a try, and uh, we'll see if maybe one of you can uh, do it in class for us tomorrow. Um, again, make sure you ask questions. If you have them, write them down in your notes um, and uh, ask them tomorrow in class.